Hi everybody, Adam Steele here, Reaper Guy, and today I'm talking about Dolby Atmos in Reaper. I'm going to keep this relatively short because Reaper isn't officially supported for Dolby Atmos, but it can be done and it's much easier to do on a single machine, specifically on a Mac because that's what the Dolby Atmos renderer needs at this moment in time. Before we dive in, I quickly want to mention the Ultimate Reaper Guide on ProMix Academy, because that's where we talk about kind of going in depth with start to finish with uh, recording a band, getting working with plugins, MIDI, all that kind of stuff in a big walkthrough kind of detail system. Yes, there are other resources out there, but this is the one stop shop for really breaking everything down. So, Dolby Atmos with Reaper. The first thing we're going to need is a Mac. And yes, I have a Mac right here. This is an M2 MacBook Air that I'm using. Uh, you can use much older Macs as well. So don't worry if you don't want to spend money on the latest and greatest thing. As long as it's some form of Mac, you could go on eBay or you know, Craigslist or whatever and get something that's you know, maybe in the last 10 years and relatively affordable. And it should be able to run the Dolby Audio Renderer, which is the first thing I'm going to open. Connected to this Mac, I have uh, an HDMI out so that you can see what's going on, uh, an audience ID 44 so you can hear what's happening too, and I also have uh, an Ethernet cable connected so that anything we do later with more advanced videos with uh, two computers using Reaper will have a, a solid landline connection, so to speak. So let's open up the Dolby Atmos renderer. This is version five. This is the latest one. And the first thing I'm going to do is go into the preferences here and make sure the input device is the Dolby Audio Bridge. And I'm going to make sure the output so that what I hear through the headphones is whatever output I'm using, whether it's the MacBook's own external headphones, whether it's the, uh, the ID44 I've got plugged in here or anything. However, I'm going to hear it, whether it's 7.1.4 output system or a binaural head, headphone system. We'll come back to that later. So let's hit accept on this for now and come back to the renderer shortly. Next, of course, is Reaper. So Reaper is brilliant, but it's really kind of default designed for stereo everything. What I'm going to do is open up the audio device settings at the top and make sure the device here is the Dolby Audio Bridge. It needs to be 48 kilohertz. It needs to be whatever block size you need it to be. And before we hit OK, I'm going to go into the audio settings and untick close audio device when stopped and application is inactive. If that is uh, selected, then every time we go to the uh, Dolby, or Dolby Atmos renderer, Reaper will stop working because that's what we've told it to do by default. So I'm going to untick that so that Reaper keeps working all the time and hit OK. Now, by default, any tracks that we have in Reaper now, if I make a new track, they come out of the master by default. So if we open up the routing on that, that's coming out of the master. The master, because we're kind of set for stereo, is coming out of one and two, which would still come out of one and two in the Atmos renderer. So they would kind of appear at the front as left and right, which is okay, I guess, but really doesn't take advantage of the rest of what's going on here. So what we want to do is let's just have, let's just import something. We'll import a media file just for the sake of this. This is a very old kind of song that I just threw together. So I'm not expecting anything great here, but if I hit play, I should hear something. So we're hearing that through the binaural render on the Dolby Atmos renderer. And you could see the lights for channels one and two were going when we hit play. So we're using the binaural technology to kind of hear this in front of us right now. Uh, there are other ways of monitoring this. If you have a lot of speakers, you can configure the renderer using the room setup. Ah, which doesn't work in headphone only mode, which is what I have selected, but you can set this 
in the preferences so that we have speakers and headphones. And so now when I, you see a lot more, uh, a lot more meters just showed up. If I go to room setup, I can define what speakers I have and what channels headphones would go out of. In this case, by default, it's 127 to 128. Uh, but that's okay. These are all the speakers that you would have in the kind of standard Atmos 7.1.4 setup. Uh, the LFE is the 0.1, the heights are the 0.4, and then we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven colors lit up. Um, I would have to plug in now 12 speakers to this and hit accept and use the output volume here as kind of the volume fader unless your interface has a specific like uh, 12 channel plus uh, volume fader. So if I hit play now, we should just hear. Yep, the first two channels coming out of here are the first two channels coming into here. I'm going to turn this back now to headphone only mode because headphone only mode makes the output one and two the binaural output for headphones, which means that I can at the very least monitor what's coming out of Reaper. Now, the way that we have to think about Atmos with Reaper is we have to think about the bed and the object. The bed is the kind of basic uh, fixed kind of main part of the sound, if you will, which I have through research found has to be up to 7.1.2, which is seven around one sub and two height speakers at the front. I would like there to be two speakers at the back on the bed, but currently that's not supported. So seven and one and two makes 10, which is why these first 10 channels are purple because they were set in the input configuration to be 7.1.2 in this speaker order. So that's the, the order that's coming in, which is the ITU standard and is what I highly recommend that you use until such time as 7.1.4 appears in this list. Beyond that are objects. And the objects are exactly what you, you would think an object to be, that let's say a sound comes in of, I don't know, a police siren or something comes on screen. That you would have as an object, you would put it in a place and then you might automate the movement of that object as the, the police siren on the car moves in the scene. It's just a completely different way of thinking about audio where we're actually sending kind of a static sound to the renderer and then using an extra plugin, which is the Dolby Atmos Panner. Let's just find you a copy of the Panner here. And we're using the Panner to move these objects around. So they're currently linked as a stereo pair, but if I unlink them, I can have one here moving and the other one moving completely separately. So I would then, if I wanted these to be objects 11 and 12, I would have object pair 11 and 12 engaged. And that means that these now, I've told these in the panel 11 and 12, this is connected on the same computer. If I go and hit accept here, you'll see that I have 32 objects defined in the input. I could have up to 128, but that's uh, CPU usage. The more, the more objects you have defined, the more CPU usage you're gonna use. I know I'm not going to use 128 objects in my music mixes. Probably 32. I might use 64 at some point later, but I need to define that before I start dragging the song into the Atmos renderer. But you'll see where 11 and 12 are no longer yellow. They're now blue because that Pana plugin has connected to this and said, hey, here's an object. Here's where it's going to be. So now the renderer knows if sound comes in on those, where to put them. We are still missing a couple of things because if we hit play in Reaper, that will not kind of automate the time of when things would move, like when the objects would move. So what we have to do is enable uh, a time code from Reaper that is 24 frames a second, not 23.976. It has to be exactly 24 because that's how Atmos uh, works. So what I'm going to do is go back to Reaper, close that panel for a minute and go, File project settings, set the project uh, to 24 and hit OK. And now I need to send time code 
from Reaper. And I'm going to try using the Dolby uh, LTC generator. So the LTC generator, there we go, uh, 24 frames a second. And I definitely don't want that coming out of the master output. So I'm going to untick master send. And I'm going to send this out of a hardware output in Reaper out of 129 and 130, which is if we look back at the settings of the Atmos renderer, if we go to the preferences there, we'll see that the LTC, which is the L time code uh, input channel is 129. We don't need to worry about 130, uh, but if we send 129, then we should in theory with this little blue clock icon ticked, then this will now follow the time code. So if I hit play anywhere in Reaper, let's go after the audio just for a second. Oh, and it will just go through the audio and hit play. We should see in Atmos. That's now moving in step. So that's one way of doing it. The other way of doing the time code, if we don't want to use the Dolby plugin, is that Reaper, let's just delete that, has its own uh, generator. And what we can do is go to insert Simpty LTC time code generator. Make sure that's at the start of the project and is longer than the song. And go to source properties and make sure the frame rate is 24. And that's it. That will do the very same thing. So you might ask, well, why did they bother making that plugin? Because not every door has its own inbuilt timecode generator that is easy to use. Reaper does, so I can take uh, advantage of that. So now to talk about the bed as a 7.1.2 thing and an object. So the object, that's relatively easy now. Let's put this music on this object track that we made because I know it's an object track. Uh, it has the Dolby Atmos music panner. I've said this is pair 11 and 12. Now what I have to do now is change the audio routing. So it's not, again, not coming out the master. We don't want anything to come out of the master in the Reaper project because then we would hear it through one and two, which could cause all sorts of problems. But the hardware output, I want to choose 11 and 12 because then Audio 1112, um, Object 1112, everything syncs up. And when I hit play, you'll, anything that I've done in the Atmos music panner with weirdly moving these around, and I can move the Z for the height as well. Now, if I hit play here, You could see these two objects here that appeared and started glowing green. And if I try and move things around in the panel, let's make sure you can see it there and I'll move the panel over here. If I move some of these controls, there's also object size, which I can play with. The object size is to do with kind of like basically film based stuff and having something kind of occupying more than a single point in space. Cool. I, I have just learned, by the way, that the VST3 version of the uh, Dolby Panner doesn't seem to do automation of the, the kind of the position very well, if at all, whereas the AU version, the Logic plugin version, seems to work in terms of automation. So use the AU version. Uh, usually I don't recommend using AU stuff, but in this case, it seems to be the one that works. So Reaper supports it. Do that. So I can change automation on things like the pan now. And so what I could do is just, I'm gonna quickly draw in some uh, automation that's absolutely crazy. And you should see when I hit play, you should start to see this object move in the Atmos range. <laughs> Now, 
there we go. We have movement. Fantastic. Now the other thing, that's an object and that's how we get things to fly around. The other thing is our Atmos music bed. Now I'm going to say this is, uh, I don't know, drums, but what we'd need to do is have each of our things going to the music bed, going out as a 10 channel thing as 7.1.2. How are we going to do that? We're going to use re surround pan, R E A surround pan. This thing is absolutely fantastic because what you can do is you can tell it how many input channels you have, which in this case is two because this was a stereo music file. And I can tell it the output, which in this case is 7.1.2 ITU because ITU being the international standard. No, I think 7.1.2 surround was the, the one that I should be using. So now this is going out of 10 outputs. This is still configured in the routing to go out to the master output, which I do not want. So I'm going to untick master send channels and I'm going to go audio hardware outputs and I'm going to add, and this might take a second, one and two. So I'm going to add hardware out one and two because that then brings me up this option. I'm going to change where it says one and two to be a multi-channel source, 10 channels, one to 10. And that is now sending 10 channels of audio out from the resurround pan plugin, which if you're mixing a stereo track or a mono track, this would come after everything on that track, by the way. You can mix, let's say you mixed a drum bus, you could mix into a drum bus and then put resurround pan on that. Or you could do this on individual channels if you want them to be in separate surround pan spaces. That's up to you and how you want to visualize your mix. But now that is coming out of the bed and I can change from here, my left and right, uh, rear and front selections and height and all that kind of stuff. So I should be able to make this higher. And now by moving these around, the rear front, low, high, all that kind of stuff, I'm placing these in a space that doesn't have object data. This is now going to go if I hit play. There we go. It's going a little bit out of all the channels it's supposed to go out of. And it should be going to the Atmos renderer as what we call the bed, which is just straight audio. And then the objects go on top. So from here, that's just about all you need. And so when you're ready, you uh, listen back to your file because you're listening back through the renderer this whole time. And when you're ready, I mean, you can then make a new master file if you haven't already and then uh, hit record in the renderer and hit play in Reaper and let it transfer through, bring all the automation through all that kind of stuff. And at the end, hit stop, or you can use the record in and out in the renderer to define when you want to start and stop that. That's why you always have a few seconds of lead in time on a track in Reaper or where any door just for the, this kind of safety to make sure things lock together. And then once that's transferred, you then are done. You can then uh, untether it from the timeline, play back your master, check it, export it as an ADM, which is the kind of the big wave file or as an MP4 video with black videos. You can check it on things like phones and Xboxes and all that kind of stuff. And those are how you get Atmos out of Reaper. So there you go. It's not exactly easy, but you can, once you've done a lot of this setup, uh, save your input settings for the renderer. You can save the project file in Reaper and then use that again uh, so that you don't have to do all your routing twice. Um, you can do track templates, which I've done in other Reaper videos, which will then drop in. And on my own channel, I've also done a really, really in-depth version of this using two computers, using a separate PC as the mix computer and using a separate Mac as kind of the the, the, the computer that everything's being sent to. So yeah, that is kind of beyond the scope of this because that's really advanced stuff, but it's possible. So there you go. Thanks everybody for watching and back to me.